have um, had a bit too many drinks. It was like a dream vacation until it wasn't. Hello, loved ones. Welcome back. If you're new here, then welcome to the channel. So I have a question for you. Have you ever had someone lie to you or lie about you? Because I know that I have, and it's not a good feeling. That alone is a violation of trust. It is very hurtful, and usually it's unexpected. So going bigger than that, how about just having someone violate you? The phrase, me too, was initially used in the context on social media in 2006 on MySpace by a sexual assault survivor and activist by the name of Tarana Burke. The hashtag Me Too was used starting in 2017 as a way to draw attention to the magnitude of the problem of sexual assault. I admit that using the hashtag Me Too was an amazing idea for all violators, rapists, liars, sex addicts, and predators in hopes to shed public light and giving victims a voice and a chance to say me too in bringing awareness to their situation and falling victim to a terrible, tragic crime and being sexually violated. However, that didn't fix the crime itself. Unfortunately, these things are still happening and unfortunately still unexpectedly. Amber Shearer and Dongela Dobson will not be the first to tell you that even having a friend walk beside you to vacation along with you is still considerably dangerous as hell. In fact, an investigation is currently ongoing in the case regarding Amber and Dongela. They are two women that are currently facing public scrutiny for their alleged hoax in being victims of a sexual crime during their recent vacation in the Bahamas. So what I did was I sat and I listened to an interview with these two victims from start to finish, and I'd like to tell their story, primarily because when I was studying this case, there are quite a few people who felt compelled to comment on how fake this is, that this is fake news. So the question of the day is, is it fake news? Let's talk about it and see how we feel after I tell you what was said to have happened out in the Bahamas. So hit the like button. Please don't forget to subscribe. I'm Chelsea J. Welcome to Crime Light. Amber and Don Gala have a powerful testimony in what led to the specialty and desire to take a five day trip to begin. Besides Don Gala and Amber growing up together, Don Gala said she lost 135 pounds and had just met her goal weight upon taking this trip and doing a gastric sleeve surgery. Amber had went from 400 pounds to 150 prior to the trip. And this was Amber's first girl's trip ever, actually. Amber had initially recommended this surgery to Don Gala because this was her best friend. Amber was actually the first to do this surgery, to do the gastric sleeve surgery in the friendship. So they decided that they were gonna take a five day cruise through carnival elation. Amber and Don Gala said the beginning of their vacation was an absolute dream come true. Like these are their words. The waters were crystal blue. And though they loved their children and their families very much, and they checked in with their children during the trip, they were relieved to be out there together alone on what they called a momcation in the Bahamas. They hung out on the beach and experienced hanging out with the dolphins. Like this trip, I imagine, was meant to be just magical. And in the beginning, that's exactly what it was just pure magic. Now, prior to taking the cruise, there are packages that you can purchase in advance and it's highly encouraged that you do so you can reserve a spot for your vacation. This is called Port Excursions, also known as Port Adventures, which are activities off the ship when the ship ports. Most port excursions are organized group activities where you will participate in an activity or explore an area with other parties sailing on the same ship. One of those packages on their website for Carnival was called Pirates Cove Resort in Freeport, Bahamas. Additionally, on the cruise in the guest service center are pamphlets that recommend things that you can do while on vacation. Per se, you change your mind or you didn't order one of those excursion packages. 
before you went on the cruise, then that's the spot that you would go to. You would read through it. You would find out what it is that you wanted to do. And then you would go venture out once the ship ports. And so also within the pamphlet of this ship was the spot called Pirate's Cove Resort alongside many other activities for guests. So there were multiple places before the women landed in Pirate's Cove Resort that said, hey, come do this. This is magic. This is what you want to do. Here's what you can go expect. And in that pamphlet and on the website, it did not include getting violated, but it was highly recommended. And that is the point, my friends. I've never been on a cruise, so I'm sure most of you can recommend or know better than I that once you exit the ship, there is assistance to which you can tell them where you want to go. And then they're going to point you in the right direction to get on a shuttle or some kind of bus or taxi service and you will go to that place with other people from the ship that also desire to go there too. And so this was what was recommended to the women to go to Pirate's Cove Resort. So Amber and Don Gala, they boarded transportation from Freeport where their ship was docked and they paid their taxi fee and they remember there was about 15 other people that were going on this excursion too. So Don Gala and Amber, they get to where they're going and they decided they wanted to step away. They called it stepping to the right, step aside from the group on the beach and they wanted to take pictures of themselves and they wanted to pose as sexy as they felt necessary because, you know, after all, they lost all that weight and this is their trip. It's been a valuable experience to be able to put their body in a swimsuit and feel confident. And nobody should have to explain that, but it is unfortunate that is a key part of the whole story. They were just trying to feel good about themselves because it'd been a long weight loss journey for both of them. It even came down to how valuable the bathing suits meant to the women. For an example, in the bathing suits they posed in, Amber had used the orange swimsuit in a boudoir shoot that she used during her 30th birthday for reaching her goal weight. Like she took herself to go get photos of herself in that swimsuit. It was very, very powerful for her. And Don Gala wanted to take the photos, those photos in specifics, to send to her husband for Valentine's Day. But because of the events that took place later, these particular photos and swimsuits would signify something absolutely opposite, something completely terrible. Don Gala said she can't bear to look at these photos because of the memories of what would happen not much later within that day. A male resort worker approached Don Gala and Amber around this time that they were taking the photos. And he asked them, he said, would you like to be a part of a promotional offer on behalf of the cruise? And Amber and Don Gala, they're like, oh my God, that is so sweet, but you know what? No, thank you. That's okay. Thank you anyway. So they politely declined. But the worker, he, you know, he's sticking around. He's making small talk and the friends, Amber and Don Gala, you know, they're thinking he's really nice and he's just being hospitable and he's showing the gesture that he's just trying to be friendly and helpful. And imagine losing all that weight and having someone say, would you like to model for this ship? I mean, that's a really awesome offer, but I'm glad to hear that they declined. However, that didn't stop him from being persistent. Shortly after, a female resort worker kind of comes along while they're hanging out in the water and they're taking these pictures. And this female worker, she offers two drinks to the friends and she says, these are $30 each. And they said, you know what? No, thank you. Then she said, okay, $20. They again, they said, no, thank you. And they started to feel pressured, but they didn't realize that it was pressure. They felt good because they're getting offered to be in a photo shoot and they're getting catered to, but then they finally came out after just persistently being asked if they wanted these drinks. And they say, you know what, here's the truth. We're not drinkers much. We don't drink that much. That's really the real reason why. But still the persistence continued. And finally, after a buy one, get one free promotional offer, they felt compelled to say, yeah, okay, fine. They were really pretty drinks in the first place. And so after saying yes, they ended up kind of using these drinks also as a prop. I mean, honestly, why not, right? Like they're sipping it, they're chilling with it. It's making the photos. They're gonna be sending these back to their loved ones. They're gonna be posting them online. Okay, so, you know, they're starting to get a little loosey goosey, all right? They're hanging out, they're sipping on their little drinks and they end up taking a picture with the original male resort worker that had complimented 
represented them and said, you know what, do you want to be a part of that promotional offer for this cruise ship? So they ended up taking a picture with him. They made a little more small talk and then Amber and Don Galen end up finding themselves on a Facebook Live. You guys can see we're in the Bahamas. Woo! And we are having, <laughs> I'm not letting her drag me down. We're having a blast. We have um, had a bit too many drinks. Um, but it's been fun. Oh my gosh, it has been fun. We're on the best time of our lives tonight. We are legit having the best time ever. If you have not taken a kid to vacation, take one. Yes, Carnival Bahama. This is so much fun. Take one with your best friend of 23 years because, yeah. oh my gosh. beautiful absolutely beautiful now I'm telling you we are having a absolute blast we are in our last day in the Bahamas we return back to the States tomorrow we we're not top this trip <laughs> Not trip. even our Vegas trip is gonna top this. This has but... been like a freaking blast. Oh, no, don't care because I'm too drunk in the whole. Now, here's the deal 20 minutes prior to that moment, they had already spoken with their families and suddenly, you know, 20 minutes later or so, they're in the ocean and they're like stumbling around. Dongela was said to have fallen into the water. We have um, had a bit too many drinks. They were questioned, what does that mean exactly? Because what it kind of sounds like it might mean is that they've been drinking and now they've hit that one drink that they can't handle anymore. But because they didn't drink anything that day, let alone most of the trip that I understand, this was a drink too many for them. Earlier that day, they felt fine. They had a cup of coffee and they hadn't eaten anything. And so, you know, once they get these drinks, they don't feel so fine anymore. Anymore. This is kind of where the story takes a turn because they are acting out of character within 15 to 20 minutes of receiving those drinks and getting on Facebook Live. Friends and family noticed that this wasn't usual for Don Gala and Amber to be acting so kind of all over the place, immature, sloppy. And so they started messaging Amber and Don Gala asking, are you good? Are you, are you okay? So Amber and Don Gala, they start getting a little nervous because they're sort of losing their balance and they're sitting there in water falling over. So they ended up getting out of water and they decided that they were gonna go just take a breath, walk on the beach, collect some shells for their families. That male resort worker that now is starting to pitch a really big part in this story. The guy that's like, hey, want a model for the ship? Ends up like talking to him, ends up in a picture with him. Well, he tells the women, he says, hey, I know where you can find the best shells. I've got the spot. Come along, I'll show you. I don't know what words he used exactly and they faintly recalled that as well, but what counts is is that this man was hanging around them for quite a while now, trying to get to know them, and now he is initiating trust to go with him. But only it wasn't for the purpose they were expecting. Amber woke up to her body being sexually violated by that resort worker. Like, fully. I can't say the R word here, but she was being R'd by this guy. So she recalled that she had been taken to a secluded spot that Amber described was bushy and lined by trees. And when she came to from blacking out, this man was doing the deed on her body, in her body, from behind her as she sees the Bahamas. That's the first thing she sees. The next thing she sees is him. She wakes up, sees the beach, turns around, looks at this man in the face and realizes something's very wrong. And so she gets up, she grabs for a tree, she gets on her feet and she makes a run for it. She started screaming, Gator, which was a nickname for Dongela. Her swimsuit was 
all twisted up all over her body. And what it sounds like, Dongela was coming from a different angle. They ended up finding one another and she tells Dongela, we have to run. And to some, this might seem questionable. How could she suddenly run and how did she know to run? How did they just, you know, find each other? Well, Amber admitted that she really wasn't all that mentally there. She still felt the effects of what she thinks was substances that was placed in her alcoholic beverage that got pushed on her while she was taking photos with her friend. See, we're not going to sugarcoat this anymore. There isn't and never was hospitality. That drink was pushed onto her. That offer to model for a photo shoot was a hook. The male resort worker, that man was a perpetrator and he lured her in when she was no longer in control of her body. Because if you remember, she was constantly declining him. Like, no, thank you. I don't want to drink. No, thank you. I don't want to model. I, I don't want to do these things. I just want to hang out with my friend and take a couple photos. Amber is in what I consider fight or flight. And right now she's flying. She's dragging her friend to the bathroom to find an attendant that she was sure was in there. Both women end up in the bathroom. They are very, very sick, guys. They, their, their swimsuits are all tangled up all over them. Don Gala was like what they described kind of barely dressed. Her swimsuit was entirely moved to the side of her body. She was really sick and she actually blacked out on the bathroom floor until help arrived. Now here's Don Gala's version of events because that was Amber's part in what she said, how she remembered everything to happen like that. I woke up, I found my friend, I dragged us to the bathroom, we got really sick, that's what she remembered. When Don Gala comes into the interview, she says she remembers gathering shells after their families reached out to ensure that they were okay. Don Gala said that they had mutually decided that they were not gonna be doing too much more that day in regards to how they had started to feel. Dongela said she left her bag somewhere safe and that the two of them went looking for shells on the beach. She recalled a few resort members walking up and down the beach to which Dongela considered to be normal for resort workers to be trolling the beach. Dongela woke up in an office to being sternal rubbed. A sternal rub is a firm rub on someone's sternum, which is a method used when testing an unconscious person's responsiveness. So that's where Don Gala remembered she woke up. She didn't recall finding Amber. She didn't remember getting to the bathroom with her swimsuit slid to the side of her body. She did not remember any of that. She was like blacked out for all of it, but she was violently sick. What she could recall in tidbits, like through her very faint memory, was when she was getting ard. She recalls her perpetrator to have pushed her down and that when she looked at his face, he was an older man with a goatee. She also mentioned that she had positively been arred through the back door and vaginally. The next thing she knew, she was in the security office where both women were receiving sternum rubs because they were both coming in and out of consciousness. Now, a woman named LaDonna Batty a family nurse from Arkansas was a passenger on the same Carnival cruise ship that Amber and Don Gala were on. I'm LaDonna Batty. I'm an FNP. I work in a clinic. It's called D-Queen Health and Wellness in D-Queen, Arkansas. I, I was up there getting a drink at the little cook shack, you know, uh, getting ready to get back on the, uh, the tour bus because it was about around 1045 and we were supposed to head back around 11 or 1130. And I heard a bunch of commotion and someone ran around the corner and said, can you come help? Can you come help? And they led me to them. They were up at the front office is where they were at. How they got to the front office, I don't know. I've asked Amber a couple of times and she says she can't remember how she got there. When I first walked in, at that time I didn't know their names. So I was called them girl number one and girl number two. Girl number one was uh, right in the door entrance in the floor when I walked in. Girl number two, was across from her in the floor and her that was amber and they were both in the floor they looked in just a complete mess um girl number one which is don gala she her bathing suit was very um out of place she was vomiting in the floor coming in and out of consciousness is what uh, girl number one which is don gala was doing amber was over in the floor across from her i immediately started trying to look at her and get her to come to and try to listen to me and talk to me at that point um I was trying to look at their skin and trying to just look at everything. That way I would be able to 
write down what I seen because I could tell it was this was a bad situation. It was going to go south pretty quickly. Uh, noticed that both girls had bruises on their legs, uh, lots of bruises on their knees. From about kneecap down is the bruises that I noticed. I immediately started trying to, I didn't have much to work with as far as to assess them besides just to try to check their pulse. So I started, you know, trying to do that, which they were both elevated because they were very excited. And I started trying to talk to Amber and she started just screaming out loud, you know, we were raped by some guys and just kept repeating that. In between that, she would have to stop because she felt like she was going to puke. And I just kept trying to redirect her and ask her as many questions as I could. During that meantime, I was also trying to watch the video surveillance is at front where they were the two women that were in there from the resort. There was a lifeguard. And then the other lady that was there was the one that gave us the introduction when we got to the resort, kind of telling us what we could do and what we couldn't do. She was also looking at the cameras. I was watching the cameras. They were going through the footage, I guess, trying to find the guy that she was saying was a staff member. And they did find that. They said, okay, here it is right here. And it was it was Amber and the, the staffer walking through the beach there. She was standing beside him. She had her arm hooked in his arm and they were just walking. And at that point, she sent someone to go get him, bring him up there for the girls to identify. And they did identify him. And they they immediately started crying and getting louder and getting scared, acting, trembling even more when they brought him into the room. They were terrified. Both the girls were. I knew something had happened to them by looking at them. I could tell that they had been assaulted in some manner. Don Gala was in way worse shape as far as coming in and out of consciousness. You know, she was trying to tell us some stuff, but in the meantime, she was puking. She was having a hard time conveying what had happened to her because she was actively getting sick and stuff. Uh, Amber was staying a little bit more focused, but I was like right in her face talking to her, you know, asking her what had happened and stuff. I seen the comments about the videos being released and the timestamps didn't match up. I, I can't even, I guess, trying to fathom what they could even be talking about. Um, I don't know what they mean by timestamp. Was the girl's story kind of jumbled and stuff? Absolutely. They were drugged. Trying to pull their thoughts together and tell a detailed event of what exactly happened. I mean, for someone that wasn't drugged, that would be hard when you went through something traumatic. So I don't know why they're tearing that apart. I mean, like I said, I understand 100% people being skeptical of the situation. I see it every day in my clinic when people come in here and tell me things and trying to get things that I don't want to prescribe. I get that. I see that. You kind of got to step back and be like, oh, okay. But I, I, I have no disbelief what happened. A security worker for Pirates Cove pulled up security footage and was able to identify that male resort worker that was hanging around the two women, the one who asked them to model and led them away to the shells. Well, he was said to only have been a worker at the resort for just a week or less. Don Gala's perpetrator was identified as a worker who worked in the zip lining area at Pirate's Cove, which was said to be nowhere near where the victims were at any time time. So he was not in his jurisdiction at all. He was all trolling the beach. He kept looking at them. They mentioned that they felt like they were kind of being checked out at one point. Anyway, interestingly enough, at some point, the staff for the resort allowed the men to walk into the same room that the victims were in. Amber said they walked in as if nothing was wrong. We, on the other hand, we freaked out. We were screaming, we're all, get out of here. They were telling them, Get out. They went into like a full panic when they saw their perpetrators walk in the room. So the resort has released a statement that the two staffers accused of the assaults have been fired for violating a zero tolerance policy by fraternizing with guests or behaving in a manner that is unsafe. So the two men in connection with the SA of the women are to be said incarcerated. Now, once the victims, okay, because that's what they are now, they're friends, they're moms, they're women, but they're victims. So once the victims, Amber and Don Gala, were back on board the ship, they felt like they were were being treated like criminals. There, they received the results of their toxicology tests, which showed that they had a plethora of substances in their systems, including benzos and cocaine with little trace of alcohol. Now you have to let that sink in for a second, like a little bit of alcohol. That was supposed to be all it was. They had more substances in their system. It was said that the staff originally tried to collect urine 
and toilet paper for evidence of being Ard. But the victims, they knew better and they did not feel good with that. And they knew their rights enough to ask for an actual R kit. And I'm glad they did because the R kit did come back positive for both women. A very interesting fact about this case, while Amber and Dongela were aboard the ship, the U.S. Embassy in the Bahamas released a level two travel advisory and they were pissed. The girls, they were so mad and so insulted. They were like, why? Didn't you tell us that? The State Department has issued a travel warning for the Bahamas due to a dangerous rise in violent crime. The U.S. recently issued a travel warning due to a nearly 8% increase in homicides, mainly local gang-related killings. Our cruise line did not make us aware of a travel advisory. We had no idea what was going on in the Bahamas. This was the drink. You had one drink. It was this drink. And what happened so, after you had it? We kind of decided at this point, we want to get out of the ocean. We're feeling it a little bit. We're going to look for seashells for our kids. The man who raped me, he was the one that directed us as to where to go. To with, find the shells. To find the shells. I woke up. I came to in the process of my rape. The man who raped me, the lady, the lifeguard, I think her name was Coletta, said that the man who raped me hadn't even been working there an entire week. Timestamp doesn't line up, uh, conflicts in the stories. Uh, this is corporate speak for go slow. These women may not be telling the truth. What's your response? I can't have any response without seeing the information that all these different entities are claiming. Uh, telling us generally that the timestamps don't match without providing any proof of what the video reveals would be impossible for me to make any assumption. Um, there's no reason for us to think anything other than that my clients are telling the 100% truth. And the fact that Carnival has actually come out and made a statement to suggest that my clients voluntarily went ashore and somehow independently identified this excursion when it was being marketed on their website when they were actually taken away from the ship on a shuttle with other carnival passengers is nonsense. The only reason they knew about this excursion was because they were told about it on Carnival's website and on by Carnival crew members. So the suggestion that, hey, look, you know, you decided to do what you wanted to do, but you can't put that on us. We're just the cruise. What you do on shore is your business. You're saying that doesn't apply. Passengers rely on the cruise lines to investigate and to ensure that the places they visit and the ports of call are safe. And by promoting and endorsing excursions like Pirate Cove, they're essentially warranting the safety for their passengers. And if there was a specific warning by the United States Embassy or the State Department that there was a specific risk of harm, the law requires Carnival to follow those warnings. The general law that applies, they have an obligation or a legal duty to act with reasonable care under the circumstances. And included with the legal duty includes a duty to warn. So what we would want to know before we were to take the position that Carnival is responsible, what measures, what additional measures were undertaken by them to warn their passengers about what the State Department was telling them. So where does this actually leave this case? Well, besides the alleged firing of the two employees for reasons completely unrelated to the actual crime, a news release posted on Facebook by the Royal Bahamas Police indicates two men have been arrested. A lengthy video of all concerned were handed over to the local police. The FBI is also part of the investigation. Amber and Don Gala, they are suffering. Amber has moved her children in with Don Gala's family and they're really scared to be alone. And the only safe place for the both of them is somewhere around each other because they went through that together. Dongela, I think, is married, and it sounds like Amber has a boyfriend, but she moved out, and she's in with her now, her family. They now are said to live in fear and panic, like, at, at the little noises, at shadows. Like, they are really really currently suffering. LaDonna, the nurse that helped them, has been in contact with them almost every day to be kind of an advocate for them and to be helping them out mentally. But as of right now, she's recommended therapy because of their trauma. Their trauma is very bad right now. And also the victims are receiving medical care, a test known to be PEP that cost 
$4,000, also while they're dealing with hate comments left by others on social media. You can clearly see that there are scrapes, bruises, and abrasions on their knees and all over their legs. Then there's the resort worker that was the female that was pushing drinks onto these women, these victims. Well, she had the audacity to reach out to Don Gala and Amber and ask that they remove posts of them holding the drinks because what they've done, this is making her look bad. This is bad for business. That's what she said, yeah. So as of now, that's pretty much the wrap of the story and I'm just gonna get into like what I'm thinking. Okay, so bear with me. There's a song that I take strongly to and it's called Female by Keith Urban. He refers to a female as a force to be reckoned with, not broken. He uses terms in the song, such as sister, shoulder, daughter, lover, and healer, which I honestly could not get past thinking about that song when I was reading this case. I, I automatically thought about Amber and Don Gala. There's a specific lyric in this song and it reads, when somebody laughs and implies that she asked for it just because she was wearing a skirt. Oh, is that how it works? I was listening to an interview with Amber and Dongela where they were corrected to feel no shame in what they were wearing that day because they were wearing something that they considered to be sexy to celebrate each other and their bodies. I personally really appreciate when women show modesty. I think that is a symbolism of confidence and a form of mastery that shows self-respect and it also respects your family, your kids, your partners when you dress modestly. But you know what, in this case, they're at the Bahamas and they just lost a damn good amount of weight. Like what was to stop them from being able to get out there and enjoy themselves to their fullest potential? Some of the hate they've received say that they deserved it, that they had it coming. That like you dress like that and oh well, you know, that's automatically pretty much asking to be ard. And I, I know that they interviewed that this is what they're being told, but I've seen it for myself. All you have to do, go to Facebook if you've got one, go to Instagram, go to any news source that you can find right now that talks about this case. Go to the comments section and just start reading what people are saying. The leader of this interview actually said something that was really powerful. She said, stop looking at the comments, stop watching social media. And the interviewer is like a big deal, okay? I really like the person that interviewed these women. And she said, if I read everything on social media, I would be hiding under a rock right now. Now it did come to light that these women actually get reached right where they're at. They're not necessarily getting on studying their own case and trying to find and dig this stuff up. Like people are finding them and coming to them and it's just adding to the intensity of their trauma and paranoia right now. They get harassed and bullied without even going there. It, it just comes and it finds them. Humanity has really become barbaric. After some of these comments that I've read, it's just, um, it's bad. People are ruthless. Okay, so for what I think, I believe them personally. The people that are insulting them, that obviously they're getting some kind of sick, twisted joy out of it, but really they all, all these people that are dumb enough to say just the lowest things, the, the dirtiest, nastiest, most harassing, awful things that you can imagine publicly, like through the comments, like I said, go find it. All of them have the same stupid questions. And I, I already answered all the questions in my content from an interview that makes perfect sense to me. Why were they dressed so sexy? Where were the husbands? Why did they drink that much then? Why didn't they listen to the advisory? Why did they take a picture with the perpetrator? So I don't know, common sense guys. What do you think? Keep the comments clean, but feel free to be honest on your thoughts. Also a word of advice from these two victims, Amber and Don Gala, are do not take drinks from anything that's not concealed. And even though they say two is better than one, they now suggest more like four. Drink concealed drinks within a group, like four people. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I really appreciate your time. And we're going to continue following the case. It's an open investigation. I'm, we haven't seen any proof that the cameras didn't match with their stories, but I believe them. Do you? Stay blessed, guys. I'm Chelsea J. Crime Light Out. We go to the crime scene.